Hello everybody, welcome back. Time to battle. As you can see my rank dropped drastically. Had a pretty bad run and just kept losing no matter what I touched basically. Um, so that escalates pretty quickly these days compared to in the past. Alright, let's battle. Alright. Like a decent hand, the problem is we can't play our one drop, which means we have a bit of a slow hand. And we are on the draw. I guess being on the draw might mean we draw into a one drop or source for this. And the hand's otherwise really good, so I think I'm going to keep it. Bit sub optimal, but we have a lot of top deck outs for one drop, either a one drop or source for Snowcrest. That's the source for Snow Crust ID. Perfect. And also makes our draw sort of picture perfect because now we can outlaw and the turn after we can play a fully activated champion with permafrost or torch pickup. And yeah, the hand turned from decent to incredible. Let's see what this is. Might be Chalice. Apparently it's like some kind of horror deck. It was a bit unexpected, I guess. I'm uh, not sure if I want to play this here actually, because might have like Islands Choice and stuff like that. I think I'll just attack with this. I mean, he might also have a Wisdom, so there is an argument to be made for this. But given that we have an alternative play, I don't mind doing this. Especially because it's like... Lightning Storm and Harsh Roof. He has the Wisdom, but we don't know if he also had the choice. Plus we might want to keep this until post Harsh Roof now. Just uh, ultimate this and then hit him for 6. Yeah, he pulled. There's the Aegis's. So the interesting question here is do we want to torch this? And I think we do. But I'm not sure. I think I actually don't want to because it just trades with the 2 1. Now we can just do this and attack. And if he trades, that's okay. He still takes 4 and then he has like 2 units to harsh roll. And we have like the follow up of this. Because, yeah, basically the torch deals the damage more than the snow crust ready, connecting for one more turn before Harshul. And we can't even say for sure if he has no double justice for Harshul, given that he needed to play the third primal for the Yeti Pult, so he might as well still have it. But it seems he doesn't, and that also means he's like in pretty rough spot here. Basically needs to top deck an undepleted justice right now. He does have found one, but he has no harsh roll. So we basically I was about to say should win the game, but him having double vanquish is similarly good. But yeah, that gives us another two units, so he once again needs a harsh roll, basically. Especially given that we have power frost and torch as a backup. <laughs> so let's see what he has. Not a whole lot, it seems. Might have an island's choice on this, though. Which puts us one damage. Yeah. Short of lethal, unfortunately. But yeah, that's where like having all this burn in the deck comes in handy. Because each of our burn spells is lethal. Not anymore, I guess. Let's see what we draw. And yeah, I think now we kind of have to do this, even though it's like a bit less damage, but it's Warcry and it gets rid of this. So that matters. But yeah, the game is slipping away. And the channel. Killing our last unit is a big problem. We're just drawing power. Yeah, maybe 
Maybe I was being a bit too conservative. We'll see if he found an answer to this. Nope, he did not. Yes! That was kind of lucky. Drawing three champions of Fury is always really, really good with this deck. Especially with Warcry triggers. Alright, that was a really close and kind of interesting game. Um, some of the maneuver situations there are kind of hard to pin down and definitely debatable how I chose to handle them. Maybe it would have been better to just Champion of Fury on turn 3 um, to either make him not be able to Wisdom in case he needs the Wisdom to hit power drops and find answers or just uh, Champion there in case he doesn't have um, Island's Choice still just being worth it. So. There are some like tough decisions in that game that are hard to determine, in my opinion. All right, next opponent. All right, got our next opponent on the draw again. Great hand, though. Alright, turn one Oni Ronin, the, the perfect draw sort of, and we have Pyronite plus Permafrost next turn or Champion of Fury depending on what the opponent does. Looks like Champion. Yep. Since it doesn't have charge, might as well wait till post combat. Then again, it doesn't matter because he doesn't have a one cost fast spell that he can play there. I guess it's better to play this pre combat to not show that we have Rock Slide or Torch or some other fast spell. But yeah, this is a spot where I don't want to show him yet what we're gonna play against open answers. Like, he might annihilate this and then he doesn't annihilate this, for example. The things matter. I think in general you get more out of forcing the opponent to make uninformed plays than hiding potential fast spell windows more often than not. Alright, that's sweet. <coughs> yeah, this game is like kind of a walk in the park. Our opponent does not really do anything. So the interesting question here is does he have harsh rule? Um, it's not likely, but I probably just don't need to place in the Yeti here, because we have him like dead, dead against anything that isn't harsh rule at this point with permafrost and rock slide. So just in case he is a harsh rule deck, might hold back on this in the Yeti. Rank up chest. There we go. Some random shift stone. That's going pretty well. All right, next opponent. Last for the first half of the games. All right, pretty decent opening hand, a bit spell heavy and unit light, but we are on the play and have a turn one only with backup, so I like it enough to keep it, but it's a bit iffy. Like, given the generous redraw system of this game, I don't think I could fault anyone for wanting to redraw this just because it only has one unit and a fragile one at that. <coughs> so it's a close call. But turn one only is really good and having cheap backup as well. Especially backup that deals with its arc enemies like grenade and drones and temple scribes and stuff in a reasonably efficient way. Thanks to Rock Slide. Making it hard for the opponent to stop this by blocking. Okay. Guess I should have attacked before playing this power to hide the rock slide. Not too um, conditioned on hiding fast spell windows usually, especially on ladder because I'm just like not um, focused enough while playing ladder usually to care enough. But it's something that is has a relevance to it. It's like a tiny edge basically that it makes sense to pay attention to if it's free. But don't go out of your way to hide your fast spells and put yourself in troublesome situations otherwise. 
Okay, I think I want to hold on to permafrost here. Or like stuff like a Cerso. And yeah, Rock Slide doesn't do a whole lot in this matchup, so dealing 1 1 is pretty decent. Alright, that's a really nice draw. Yeah, probably gonna have to kill Titan this way. And not gonna permafrost because we want Rakano Outlaw to be safe from a Cerso. Like if he drops a Cerso here, we can just permafrost a Cerso and drop our Outlaw. There's an argument to be made for just not attacking this turn. And yeah, I think I'll just drop Outlaw here without doing anything else. Sure, I could like permafrost this and attack for Warcry and trade with the Dawnwalker, but then he might get it back and also we lose the permafrost if he drops like a Cerso. It's not likely that he has a Cerso because I think he would have played a Cerso over Reinhardt. But then again, there's the chance he's trying to bait a permafrost with his Reinhardt or that he just top decks a Cerso and drops it. And then we are in big trouble. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty good, because 5-6 stalls his board and gets in in the air and everything. So as long as he doesn't have a Titan, we're in a pretty good spot now. Lots of blockers. Alright, let's get in. Not gonna permafrost because he has no good blocks, especially with the torch backup. So he's just gonna jump anyway. And then once again we're in a spot where we uh, want to have the permafrost to stop us or so. So that he's willing to like give up his card draw guy. Hmm. Since his board, like he can drop an obelisk and initiate and power between like exactly three cards that would kill us. Like an obelisk alone would kill us 9, 11, no 14. So he needs like obelisk plus activation of the threshold. And then we can still torch. So I think I just don't want to use anything here. I think not permafrosting here is better. Gives us more options and protection from potential things he can do. <coughs> and yeah. Um, this is annoying. Okay, I think we need to torch this, unfortunately. Not sure why he's attacking with this, because I think this is like his best jump blocker. But I'll take it. Okay, so this means we can do this. Could put him to one, but I think this is better. And then we just attack and potentially power frost afterwards. Because once again, power frost still our protection from the so Because that's the only truly scary thing right now. And we are not dead on the backswing, and the permafrost might be able to take away his only blocker. He has like Cerso plus a killer effect, so be it. That's okay. And now we got him, because we held on to our permafrost for as long as we can. Ta da! Because when you're the aggressor, you don't need to be concerned with them racing if they are not realistically able to do so. And Elysian is a very uh, calculable racing opponent, especially after they uh, use the Crystallize. And sure, if he has a Permafrost for our Outlaw, we can't, can't win the game anyway. But yeah, 
this was a really nice showing of the deck and yeah we were capable of showing how to maneuver and beat um, these big time monsters and the dreaded titan all right that was a really nice set of games and strong showing of the deck stay tuned for three more games coming up in a moment thanks for watching